Hello and welcome to Get Yourself Optimized. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and today it is my pleasure to have Tim Sanders with us. Tim founded the Omnia Radiation Balancer brand after meeting a scientist who had a solution that brings all EMF fields to balance and harmony in a unique and fascinating way. Tim, it's so great to have you on the show. Thanks very much for having me. Great to, uh, great to be here. So the way we met was seemingly random, but there's nothing random. <laughs> I've, I've discovered mm -hmm. uh, everything happens for a reason. Uh, and so I was on Facebook. Uh, our mutual friend, Neil Cannon, was posting about serendipity. And you commented on that post. And I just get this like electric sort of feeling when I'm supposed to reach out to somebody or I'm supposed to do something, connect or whatever. So I got that and I'm like, all right, for whatever reason, I'm supposed to reach out to Tim. And I commented on your comment and then I invited you onto the show. And next thing you know, here we are. And what really inspired me about uh, what you posted on that uh, uh, Neil Cannon post was your um, uh, experience with serendipity and sy synchronicity, which I think are two different things, but I, I, let's uh, let's save that for a little bit later. I'd, I'd love to hear your story and how this uh, serendipity synchronicity thing uh, ties in to this uh, amazing company that you founded. Absolutely, and uh, you know, before I get started on that, I we can actually dis we can actually explain why you got that tingly moment. Um, you know, through the new physics of the, the, the inventor <laughs> that, that uh, I met. Weirdly, you know, we, we can talk about the zero point field and how energy moves through that zero point field, um, even through reading a post. So, um, you know, that could be something interesting to get into later. But um, sure. So, yeah, I did a post where, where basically I told a little story, didn't I? Neil was reaching out. I must have been bored. And, um, and I just said, you know, something weird happened to me where I was in Singapore, where I used to live. And um, I had found a product that was quite good at harmonizing radiation fields. Um, and I came back to the UK because I kind of got thrown out of, of Singapore. And, um, and I built a brand around, you know, his te this technology. And I was going to have exclusive rights to sell it in the UK. And, um, and then I said, well, I need a contract with you, the, the kind of Singaporean um, seller uh, or, or, you know, producer. And um, and they just refused to sign a contract. So I was just like, well, you know, I can't I can't run a business without a contract for, with my supplier. You know, it's just as simple as that. I just thought that was like, you know, <laughs> pretty basic. But they refused to do it. And I was just like, you know, um, OK, well, I'll drop that. You know, I'd spend a bit of money on the website and this, that and the other. And then something was calling me to go to a, a festival run by a guy called Michael Tellinger. Um, and, uh, and so I just went, I didn't have a job or anything like that. And, uh, this festival was a kind of consciousness festival where people were talking all about the Bosnian pyramids or saving the, 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 you know, the, the, the wildlife in Africa or biodynamic farming. Um, and then there was a talk on free energy and I went to this free energy talk and it was pretty mind warping, you know, I was sort of nodding off. <laughs> And then halfway through, the, the presenter said, oh, yeah, and by the way, I've got the solution to all the radiation problems in the world. And um, and I was like, oh, you know, my ears pricked up. I woke up a little bit. And uh, and so I got chatting with him afterwards. And I said, you know, what have you got? And he said, oh, I've got these um, these stickers. And I just said, mm, no. Nah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I basically was thinking, you know, stickers. Yeah, how's that, how's that going to work? Um, but. Here's the thing, I, I, through my research into the, the other product, I knew that you could do something very simple, which was a muscle test or what is called applied kinesiology, which you know you and your um, listeners may know about, which is where you test the body's strength. You know, it's electrical balance against something that might be a stressor or something you might be allergic to. And um, I knew that 99.9% .9 of people were kind of allergic to their mobile phone because they all failed muscle tests when I, you know, put their phone in their hand. And this is the kind of thing that I do now, now that I've built this brand around his technology. And so I took his stickers, uh, asked him if I could take the stickers. And I said, you know, do you mind if I do some experiments with people around here? And he'd never seen a muscle test. 
So I basically put them on the, on the phone of these people. Well, first mm -hmm. of all, I tested them with their phone and they went weak. And then I put these stickers on their phone and they went super strong. And I was like, right, you've got something here. I need to know everything that's in that sticker <laughs> and how you did it. And, and that took me on a journey, um, not only to, you know, complete all the work that I'd already done from this Singapore partner that dropped out and create, you know, a brand that, you know, around a product that I, I felt was of in, incredibly strong value to, to anyone that's holding a phone or t typing on a laptop or sleeping through their Wi-Fi or whatever they're, they're doing because we're surrounded by it all now. Um, so it took me on a journey to, to finish that and launch the brand, but then also to find out all about the true science of the radiation field, um, which has been confusing most people for a long time. And that takes us quite deep into what an atom really is um, and, uh, and how everything is radiating, including ourselves, uh, and um, and every atom, every atom in a in a glass, you know, in a in a glass of water. But then, every every molecule of water in the glass of water is also radiating. So every radiation is a process of each atom. Um, but it's got obviously a bit of bad PR these days because of things like five G um, and uh, and so on. So yeah, that's how that's how I got that. That was my serendipity story. <laughs> That's amazing. And so are you business partners now then with that scientist you met? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, he he is trying to produce more solutions. Uh, his new solution is, uh, uh, which I'm hoping he gets right, is, uh, is going to be kind of like a board with a whole load of plugs in it. And behind the plugs is going to be some cables that go into a generator that then just basically plucks energy out of thin air. Um, because if you know the right science about how everything is a spinning ring of electrical current, not just, you know, the, the wires that connect into our computer, which really are just heat, passing light and heat down a copper wire. If you understand that light and heat is actually all around us, you know, largely thanks to the sun, um, then you can understand what Tesla was on about, which is, you know, everything, everything is the light. Everything is the light, you know, my body, my you know, glass of water and the water inside the glass of water. Uh, everything is spinning rings of electrical current or light. And so he's he's building a contraption that downloads that. And then basically that would disconnect us from the grid. But don't tell anyone <laughs> um, because no, I mean, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit <laughs> of a secret at the moment. But, you, you, you know, it's a bit it's a bit of a dangerous topic as well for reasons I won't I won't get into. Yeah. So if we can mitigate the effects of emf radiation then presumably we'll have uh better health uh better longevity and uh, you know fewer complications that might come about because of the unhealthy exposure yeah and i guess the first thing to say about that is why is it unhealthy you know why is it unhealthy exposure um because i have a lot of these sort of discussions stroke exchanges with people on anything from quora to youtube or whatever and they boldly come out and say don't be ridiculous this is all just a conspiracy theory uh, everyone knows that you know emf is non-thermal non-ionizing and, you know, it doesn't create enough energy to break a molecular compound and or shake a, an electron off an atom in, in, you know, classic physics terms. And um, and so they wave that that stick and they just say, you know, that don't be ridiculous. Um, and then I come back and I say, well, have you seen any of the tests on rats that have been exposed over a long time, over a long time, not just over one day or whatever, but over months and years? Have you seen any of the results of those tests on, you know, biological life that's uh, subjected to exposure to EMF radiation fields? And this can be 2G, 3G, 4G. You know, all the papers have been out there for the last 25 years. And you'd be surprised to hear that there's about 35,000 of them on one particular portal. And if anyone wants to fact check me on that, you can go to emf-portal.org. And you can see 35,000 studies on rats. And another one is uh, a very good one is bioinitiative.org, uh, which is a, um, a, a kind of conglomeration of, of all the major papers that 
that shows all sorts of things from you know, that show up in rats from infertility to DNA strand breaks to cancers to endocrine system damage, everything. And this is from supposedly non-ionizing, non-thermal, low-frequency radiation. So um, here's the thing. What we represent is some knowledge that, that says that there is a different quality other than heat within a radiation field that can affect us. Um, and I'm going to get into that a bit a bit later. But ultimately, you know, the electromagnetic spectrum shows us that anything on that side that goes non-ionizing, well, we broad brush that as harmless. Anything on that side that, you know, vibrates very fast, creates a lot of heat, breaks a molecular compound, that's dangerous, like an X-ray. Um, so there's a big sort of, you know, issue there, which is that, you know, 35,000 studies that all come to the same conclusion, if we believe in science, there must be something in that. There must be some smoke, behind, you know, um, billowing out of that fire. Um, so the question is, what is it? What is the quality within man-made electromagnetic fields that might cause vibrational imbalance in our bodies? And that's what I'm here to explain today, which I think might be quite interesting for everyone, um, because there is a major difference between the sun, which yeah. is the giver of all life, which is vibrating faster and is hotter as a radiation field than EMF from phones, Wi-Fi, laptops, um, electric cars, etc. Um, so the sun is vibrating super fast and is super hot. And don't get me wrong, if I spend too much time in the sun, I get sunburned because it is hot. However, the sun doesn't create, doesn't cause all of those problems, like I've mentioned before, you know, things like internal cancers, infertility, um, endocrine system damage, DNA strand breaks, etc. It doesn't cause those effects. So what is it in the man-made radiation field that is, uh, that is causing this, um, well, what we call dissonance? So it's kind of a vibrational effect. And for to understand that, we need to understand how every atom vibrates, um, you know, whether it's the atom in my body or the atom, like I've said earlier, in the water or the kind of the wave field, the invisible wave field of the EMF, um, electromagnetic fields for anyone who doesn't know what EMF is. So shall I get into that now? Just kind of, I'm sort of going that way. Yeah, um, yeah, let's do that. Let's get into the science. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. So the, the, um, the scientist is called Dr. Ilya Lakisevich, and um, he's done tests to show that the, um, the atom is actually a spinning torus field of light. Um, and when we talk about light, light is one and the same as electrical current, right? So they're one and the same. And as Tesla used to say, everything is the light. And what he meant by that is that everything is light compressing itself into matter, right? That's the same in my body as it is for the table I'm sitting at. And it's the same for invisible electrical wave fields like my brain waves, right? My brain waves, your brain, what brain waves, alpha, beta, mm -hmm. gamma, they're all invisible electrical fields. And I think as, as I've mentioned before, everything in the body is electric, everything, because we're made of atoms and atoms are spinning rings of electrical yeah. current. And we know that because the heart is a big electrical didn't, pump. Uh, um, Nicholas, you know, uh, didn't Nikola Tesla have a quote, something along the lines of uh, our brains are just antennas or are just receivers uh, of thought, something along those lines? Yeah, I, I forget. I know the one you're talking about and I forget exactly what it is. But um, yeah, he was um, he was very much aware of the true physics um, of our universe, you know, and um, and the sacred geometry within the universe. Oh, here we and, go. I, I found the else. quote. And... Yeah, I, I found the quote. It's, uh, my brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. That's quite profound and very That's true. great. And <laughs> So if we if we take what he's just referred to as source, right, um, then I can explain a little bit more as to what he means by that. 
um, because effectively source exists mm -hmm. inside every atom, right? So what Dr. Lakisevich, who is also Serbian, funnily enough, and also it might be a bit too weird for some people, but has spoken to Tesla in his meditations. Um, so he operates on the same level in terms of his physics. Um, you know, he goes external or, you know, shall we say, off uh, off this plane to, to to ask questions and to and to receive answers um and effectively what he's shown us is that the atom is a torus field which for those people who don't know what a torus field is imagine a donut and imagine that on the inside of the donut is empty space or on the inside of the best donuts is empty space um and imagine within that in empty space right so you've got an electrical current or a spinning donut of light. And then on the inside of that, that empty space, you've got a still magnetic point, right? Which holds the electrical current of the donut in place, right? So you've got this relationship, right? Between uh, the magnetic still point and the electrical current, which is uh, circling around it. So basically, you've got this uh, this trade-off between the magnetic still point and the electrical current spinning around it in a donut shape, right? A torus shape, um, and that is effectively the building block of all life. Um, and you may know through your kind of um, uh, adventures in spirituality and other things that there's a um, uh, uh, an institute called the HeartMath Institute, which measures the torus field of energy that comes out of our hearts. And it's yeah. got, it basically has two donuts of electrical current that, that emanate from our hearts, one to about three, me, three feet and the other one to about 10 feet, which is a bit weaker. So the point is that everything operates on this kind of harmonic scale from this, you know, it's like as above, so below, you know, everything operates in the micro and the macro in the same way. Right. So, uh, you know, that there's a giant torus field around the whole of the earth. And then, you know, it, it comes down to the smallest common denominator um, through the cell, which is also a torus field of, of light, like I said, and into the atom and the particle. And they all behave in the same way. And if you want any evidence of that, because some people might think I'm, I'm you know, just basically putting theories out there, if you extract blood, and look at it under the microscope, you can see the donuts. <laughs> you can literally see the donuts with a hole in the middle. Um, and I've done that. And it's on my website because one of the tests that we do to prove that the Omnia radiation balancer is effective is on my blood, where we basically, I, I basically, I take a, a, a sample, which is my baseline. You know, I, I, I turned everything off overnight, went in at, at 9 a.m., took a sample where I wasn't exposed to any radiation at all that day, I took a sample to see my baseline. Then I watched a video holding a phone for 20 minutes. So I was in direct contact with this, you know, um, radiation, watching a video on my phone and all my blood started to stick together, right? It all started to form what, what is called Rulo syndrome, um, which is also known as adherence. And it's not a disease, but it's not the optimal way your blood should should look. Your blood should literally look like these separate donuts or torus fields of energy. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see that video on our on our website, and you, it's clear as day. You know, the 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 blood starts to congeal and adhere and develop Rouleau syndrome, and, and little chains of blood cells all sticking together. And then we put our technology, the Omnia radiation balancer, onto the phone and watched another twenty minutes directly afterwards, while my blood was still, you know, in my body congealed and adherent and everything else. And 20 minutes later, we took another sample and I didn't know what to expect because I thought I'd have to come back the next day to do a real proper test. But we did it straight afterwards and the blood returned to normal. All the donuts separated and went into their own space. And you can see that as one of our, our tests, which kind of show two things. Yeah. Firstly, that you know those thirty-five thousand tests that have been reported on on rats, you know there's something in that because we can observe it in the blood. Uh, and secondly, the thing that it proves is that he 
has a solution that is very effective. I have to be careful not to say it works because that gets me into trouble legally, funnily enough. But his his solution is highly effective. Um, so what is it in a man-made radiation field that causes harm, allegedly? Um, well, what we've what we found out is that there's another quality other than heat that can affect us. And it's the position of that magnetic still point inside the torus field. So if you imagine again, and this is difficult to explain on, a, on an audio, um, if you imagine again that you've got that donut of spinning light and on the inside of the donut is empty space and on the inside of the empty space is that magnetic point holding the donut in its shape, that magnetic point can move around away from the center, right? Um, and the thing that moves it around is consciousness. So I'll give you an example of how we can move consciousness or we can move um, the zero point around in our bodies. You know, we can do it through a frown versus a smile. And one of them, the frown, is a contraction, you know, where we're, we're basically, you know, um, uh, squeezing all our energy in our bodies. And the other one, the smile, is an expansion it's 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 when the, the zero point goes back into that that um that love vibration the vibration of love versus the bright vibration of fear and if you want to take it one step further and this is where it gets a bit esoteric and a little bit woo woo um but you know but that's what i'm here to do i'm here to challenge people's uh woo woo ometer <laughs> um then if we look at the electricity grid it's literally a grid it's it's kind of like a slave system right we download energy from the grid we pay for it it's gone repeat 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 why do we go to work pay the bills so they've got us through the electricity grid right and the science that we represent is the actual um science of of liberty if you like which is that hey if we actually know the right physics we can download energy from the ether and use it freely without harming the earth or us <laughs> so let's have a look at that um you know if humanity is ready for it um so that's what it is it's the position of the zero the magnetic zero point at the center of the field if that pos if that position is not centered then the balance of the electrical current starts to um, become malformed and if you're beaming a whole load of imbalanced, uncentered energy fields at people through their phones, laptops, Wi-Fi's, then the electrical current or the, the magnetic point inside every spinning ring of electrical current in our cells starts to pick up that imbalance and that uncenteredness. And it starts to vibrate in sympathy with it. And the best way that I can explain that uh, in terms of us being cell towers too, right? The human body is a cell tower too, right? We're a tower of cells, but all those cells are vibrating with electrical current, like I've just explained, right? So the best way for me to explain that is if you were to get two guitars and put them together, right? So one faced the other and you plucked the, so they're all in the same tuning, right? So you plucked the A string of one guitar then guess what happens to the other guitar? I'll tell you, only the A string right. of the other guitar starts to vibrate, right? So only the A string, because all the other ones are in a different yeah. frequency band, right? So you get that sympathetic resonance, right? So if the human body, with all its extraordinary organs you know, that are all I, vibrating I with I've different electrical that... currents, I think that I've heard that all of, uh, like if you had a room full of, um, uh, what are those called where they um, uh, help you to stay at a time in the music? Uh, tick, 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 tick. What's that called? Yes. Uh, uh, well, timekeepers, yeah. yeah. Um, metronomes. So yeah. I, I've heard that when, when you have all of the metronomes at different um, times, they synchronize if they're in the same room. Have you heard right. about this? I've never seen that. No, that sounds very interesting. Yeah. So they'd, they'd all start picking up each other's vibration and vi and frequency and start to resonate in sympathy. And that's that's what happens, right? It's the same as having a hug. 
you know, it's it's the amplification of, of, of you know, love from one person and love from the other person amplified. Same as having a hug, that's an electrical reaction in your body. And another electrical reaction in your body is picking up a cell phone because that's a big electrical energy field, the body picking up a big, you know, electrical radiation field, the cell phone. Um, so you have that meeting. But if the cell phone is radiating with imbalance and uncenteredness, then the body picks up that imbalance and uncenteredness. And that's what we try and show in all of our tests. We do tests, like I've mentioned earlier on, applied kinesiology, uh, where we do muscle tests to, to see if the body is strong or weak when we hold phones. And 99.9% .9 of people go weak. And then we put our technology on and they go super strong. So if you want a strong body, I suggest you look at our website and, and you know, check those tests out for yourself because that's the good news that we represent is that we can bring these fields to balance and centeredness. So we do muscle tests or applied kinesiology. We do heart rate variability. So we, we look at what happens to the heart when we're using our phones and laptops and so on. Um, we do water crystal photography, uh, where we look at how water's structure is changed by 5G radiation fields. And then does it improve once we irradiate water with, uh, with our technology applied? Um, so that's another interesting test that you can have a look at and see the results of. They're very positive results. Um, and then, like I said earlier on, we did do live blood analysis as well. So um, that's a very long winded answer to your question about whether, you know, the EMF is healthy or not. And, and, uh, and sort of an introduction to how we how we uh, uh, resolve that. Yeah, really cool. And um... Now, there's another study that I uh, recently learned about. I was reading the book Mind and Matter, and uh, there's um, an, a study where they, they, so radioactive decay is very precise and predictable. And with uh, americium, there was um, a study done on the isotope of americium, I forget which number, but it would take about 432 years or something like that. I'm just, again, going from memory. Uh, and that's the half-life. But then somebody hmm. with um, a great deal of skill in, in um, energy work, like a, uh, a Qigong expert or somebody, was sending chi to the americium and it modified the rate that uh, it would um, decay and an extreme heat doesn't wow. modify the decay rate um, uh, gravitational uh, fields and uh, strong emfs none of that will modify the decay rate but sending the power of but consciousness does and intention. Yeah. Yeah. By at least yeah. 10%. And the reason for that is because the zero point reproducible. Is... Yeah. So, so the reason for that is because the zero point, which resides at the center of every atom, which, you know, we often hear about the zero point field, right? So the zero point is effectively the source of all energetic outcomes because the light ring borrows the energy from the magnetic point to spin itself into matter, right, in an atom. And then it discharges itself into the ether. So this process carries on flicking on and off, right? The atom makes itself, let's, let's imagine it's a cell in my body, right, made up of lots of atoms. The atoms make themselves into a cell in my body and then discharge themselves into the ether. Right. So they flick on and off, on and off in rapid succession. So all cells are literally making themselves and dying in rapid succession. Right. Until the end of their life. Right. That's how all life is moving forwards. But that zero point in the center of the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, at the, at the center of the atom, um, is effectively the mind point of the universe. Right. Because all of those zero points are connected 
into what we call the quantum field or the zero point field, right? So from that zero point field, all energetic or material outcomes emerge. And if you can tap into that zero point field through Reiki or any kind of meditation or mindfulness or something like that, then you can affect outcomes materially, right? That's the power we have as human beings. Um, you know, we are the master creators in that way. You know, we're the ones that build bridges or write operas or, um, who knows, breakdance <laughs> or whatever. You know, we do all these amazing things. That's what we do. And we're always creating. Um, you know, we could create an amazing salad for lunch. Uh, that's what we're doing. We're always looking to, you know, um, expand our consciousness and um, and use, if you like, the divine tools to and to create and um and that would be how that person used reiki to go into the energetic field of whatever that was called was it americium or something um and and effectively change its mm -hmm. spin change this change its spin so that you could you know like you said reduce the half-life um so that that's the same thing as when you got a tingle when you looked at my serendipity post because some kind of information was calling you and saying, hey, you know, come and come and see me here or something like that, which I've had many times before as well, by the way. You know, I'm not just sort of blowing my own trumpet there, but, you know, I've, I've looked at things and got tingles and and gone, OK, there's something I need to pay attention to there because the quantum field is sometimes knocking on your door and, and sort of saying, hey, you know, have a look at this. Um, and that's that's how Reiki works as well. You know, if I want to send Reiki energy to someone across the world, then I would do it through that connected zero point field, sending my intention through the, the magnetic still point, which is the mind point of the universe, um, uh, you know, uh, from one vibrating electromagnetic body to another. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's how how healing energy can be sent. And we have more powers, I think, than we we can possibly imagine you know to <laughs> to to quote ben obi Wan kenobi um yeah so um yeah it's uh, uh, uh it, it's exciting and th this is the time to sort of step into that that realization i think yeah amazing and and it's not just uh the um it's like this this phenomenon of getting the electric sort of feeling or the intuitive uh, sensation that you should call somebody or uh, do something is almost like going mainstream. I just, for example, heard uh, Vishen Lakiani in a Facebook ad talking about um, this phenomenon and how he was he's the founder of Mind Valley which is a very mm. successful um, online yep. yeah, uh, course uh, uh, platform. Yeah. And, and he, he was talking about when prior to him founding uh, the, the company Mind Valley, he was working as a salesperson dialing for dollars. It was commission only and he was barely making enough money to survive and he went to a Silva method course, came back and applied that to his work by tapping in to the zero point field, I guess, and, and getting a sensation of whether he should call a particular law firm or not. So instead of going through the phone book alphabetically uh, in, in the, um, the law firm section of the yellow pages, like everybody else was doing, that was, uh, you know his his colleagues in in the um, in the call room. He would just use his intuition to decide who to call, and mm -hmm. his sales doubled, and then they doubled again, and then they doubled again. A few months later, he's he's a VP at that company, right. just from tapping in to mm -hmm. uh, to that quantum field and getting a sense of who who to call. How do you get that? Right? How do you, what's, what's the secret sauce to just knowing what is the right move to make at the right time? You know, some, some people will discount that as woo woo nonsense, 
and yet there are reproducible studies showing that the stuff works. Like um, Dr. Joe Dispenza was talking mm. about uh, on, on one of his Q&A calls recently how a, a random number generator was influenced by the power of thought slightly, but mm. it was statistically significant enough and it was reproducible. So mm. people uh, in a room trying to influence through thought the random number generator and it worked. They were able to do so. Well, I mean, we shouldn't be so surprised really, should we? Because we're influencing our bodies all day mm. with our thoughts. And, you know, we're, we're, we're making them strong or weak. You know, we're, we're telling ourselves messages all day, whether they're positive or or not, you know. And I like to hope, <laughs> I hope that I'm telling me myself more positive than, than negative. But, you know, every now, now and again, I slip into a negative mindset, as we all do, because we're all human. Um, but this is this is our, our power. And this it, it, what's probably missing from even Joe Dispenza, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'd love to ha have him you know, talk to the scientists that, that invented my product because I think they'd have a great time because his is the physics which kind of fills in that, that blind spot that says, well, here's the physics behind what's actually happening. And if we understand that, and maybe we could, if you want to go and test it and measure it and everything else and consolidate it as a truth, then we can work from a different platform which actually allows us to explore that whole area of, well, hold on, you know, how powerful are we? Um, you know, you, you may or may not. Um, I, I imagine you probably do, but you probably do realize how much human consciousness plays in shaping our own reality and how much it's also directed to shape possibly a reality that we didn't want. Um, and it's done through fear. You know, there's a lot of fear in the media. If, if I just turn on the news, the BBC news or whatever, the, 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 the intro music is here's your dose of fear, <laughs> right? And you can be controlled to manifest that whole reality of fear, right? Very easily, very, very easily. And this is a worry for everyone because, you know, what's coming next? Well, I mentioned earlier that all of our brainwaves are electrical fields, alpha, beta, gamma. That's a fact. It's been measured. They're all vibrating at different hertz and frequencies, right? So, you know, can that be intercepted by, you know, the electromagnetic fields all around us coming at us from 4G cell towers, 5G cell towers, and so on? The answer is absolutely, um, you know. Um, so we need to be wary of that, you know. We need to be wary of, uh, of that, you know, possibility for ma manipulation. Um, but yeah, it's, I like to dwell on the other side, which is the whole, you know, the potential side, the potential of us um, and where we're going with that, because I believe we're, we're in, in a situation where we're at a crossroads right now where, you know, we have the potential to, to step into our power and potentially make a lot of bad things good or wrong things right or whatever you, however you want to want to call it. So um, with this knowledge, you know, not the, this is the only knowledge, you know, I'm just saying that with, with knowledge like this, we we can actually step into that and, and actually say, well, hold on, if we don't want it collectively, then we can create something else, you know, and it's uh, it's understanding how we're held in a certain frequency and vibration and saying, well, actually, I don't need that anymore. I'm going over here. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and lots of old systems will will crumble as a result. Well, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> and <laughs> and I'm are. curious yeah. to hear how how you started with with the uh, muscle testing because that came first before discovering this uh, scientist with with uh, with the technology for uh, ameliorating the effects of EMF. How did you come across uh, muscle testing? How did that become a thing that you just you know, commonly did. Did you pick up yeah, uh, well, power versus force on some recommendation or? I've done the power versus force. That was extraordinary. You know, where you look at how, how much capability there is in your body that you never even knew about. Uh, in fact, I've, I've been on a course 
by a German martial arts guy who teaches people, you know, I, I was in Asia at the time and imagine a typically slim Asian girl and he teaches you to basically kneel down on top of her and force her arms to the ground. And then he teaches the girl to literally just throw you off her. And until you see it in action, you will not believe it. But ultimately, there is a means by which you can drop into the absolute soul power of your body and just throw me, you know, who is several stones heavier than, than the girl, straight off. And things like that. And then the flexibility in your body and then all sorts of other things. And it's all, you know, all these things are, are connected, um, you know, to what, what, what we've been saying so far. But how did I get into muscle testing? Well, I found out that I was allergic to milk when I was 13 through a crazy recommendation from someone else's parents, um, you know, saying, oh, you've got to go and see this guy called, I think his name was Dr. Wong. Um, and he was on Harley Street in London. And I went up and he basically, I just put something in my hand again and again and again. I was super strong, um, 13 years old. I was like super fit at that time. Um, and then he put milk in my hand and my arm just went. It just went. And I was just like, what's that? And he said, that's milk. And I was like, I drink a lot of milk. And he said, you got to stop. <laughs> that's why you're here to find that out. Um, so I knew about it through experience, right? Lots of people try and trash muscle testing, but I wonder if they've ever tried it, um, you know, because feeling and experiencing is important. Um, you know, there's lots of people in the scientific world that try and say and try and intellectualize everything and say, no, there must be a reason for everything. There must be a, um, a an equation, equation for everything, etc. But there's also experiencing and feeling, and that's important. Yeah, maybe it can be misled or um, uh, compromised in some way. But for me, that was very, very clear. Um, you know, he was pressing, pressing down with the same pressure every time. And as soon as he put milk in my hand, I went weak. And then if you fast forward quite a few years, maybe decades, well, definitely decades from that moment, I when I went to Singapore, I was actually, before I went there, I was, um, I, I'd encountered a bit of a, I'd had a bit of a brush with stress. And I, you know, had a, had some mental health issues, which was a bit of a gift looking back at it. You know, um, it forced me to stop what I was doing and start looking after my body through yoga, meditation, um, other things. And so that was a bit of a gift. And then I went to Singapore and I, you know, I just started complaining. My body started complaining about certain things. And I met this alternative healer and she just walked around the house with me saying, right, pick up your deodorant, pick up your aftershave, go through your fridge, you know, um, pick up your, the water that you're drinking, all these things, and tested me and said, right, that's got to go, that's got to go. And then she pulled out her phone and I went, oh, no, don't do this. <laughs> you know, because I was just like everyone else. I was like, I'm on my phone for eight hours a day. Um, and, um, and sure enough, the body went weak. And I said, well, I knew that was going to happen. What are we going to do about it? And she said... I don't know, but I, I, I'm looking out for solutions. And, um, and then she found a solution and, you know, she introduced me to that person and that's the product that I was going to sell. But, uh, in the end, I found something that was better, uh, easier to sell for a start. And secondly, gave me the true reason why we react to man-made radiation fields in different ways than we react to the, uh, to the sun. Uh, and like I said earlier on, it's because those electromagnetic fields made by man are vibrating with a different consciousness which makes them imbalanced and uncentered and the nice loving cells in our body do not resonate well with that energy wow what a great story that uh you know you you were able to come across the the solution to emf exposure through having a health challenge that started you, you, like the, the whole thing is all so elegantly interconnected right where you you uh first discovered you were allergic to milk through the muscle testing with dr wong and then uh you're in singapore and you need to get um like the exposure to all the different uh, 
toxins in, in your house uh, out, out of uh, your system. And then mm. this lady uses it and then recommends uh, an EMF um, ameliorating system, which starts you down that, that rabbit hole. <laughs> really cool. Absolutely. It, it, you know, when I look back at it, it, it almost looks like a sort of stepping stone thing. You know, it's like one thing leads to another kind of thing. Um, and I guess it is a bit like that. And, um, you know, that's that's how I know it's kind of right for me, you know, um, that I, I haven't had to necessarily force it. It's just fallen into place. Um, so, yeah. And, I, you know, I recognize straight away that this was a problem that's affecting you know, if not 99, then 100% of people. Um, there's only two people I can remember who I muscle tested and didn't go weak. And I've tested hundreds. And um, and so of all the other people I'd, I speak to, I speak to kinesiologists all the time. They're, they say that, you know, no one that we test goes to stay strong uh, when, you, when you have a phone in your hand. Um, so, um, so, yeah, it's... Um, uh, it, it, I'll tell you something else, which is kind of anecdotal, but the other thing, the big thing that I learned about through through this whole kind of, if you like, eliminating process is that is that we're not our bodies, right? Um, we're not actually our bodies. We are actually a, a consciousness, a soul, whatever you might want to call it, within the body. Um, and our bodies are operating with our consent but also sort of um, independent of our consent, if that makes sense. So the example of that is our fingernails are growing, but we don't really notice it. You know, our stomachs di digesting our food and turning it into, into fuel. We don't really notice that either. Our livers draining all the toxins out of our body and getting rid of it um, and so on. And our air, you know, lungs are bringing oxygen into the bloodstream. All of these things are happening and they're all divinely operated within the body, you know, and it all comes from that zero point at the center of every atom and the center of every cell, which knows what to do. And so the body is kind of like an orchestra of different instruments playing at different frequencies. And we know that because the kidneys are vibrating at different frequency to the liver, to the spleen, to the heart, to the brain waves and everything. Right. So. We've got all these amazing electrical currents running around our bodies doing different things. And it's and we kid ourselves that it's our body. But actually, we're just here deciding what to have for lunch or, you know, which job to do or who to fall in love with or, you know, et cetera, or how much to work out, you know, those kind of things. Um, so, you know, uh, that's that's the thing that I learned um, from this experience which helped me a lot to evaluate my stress and everything else you know like it was it was almost like a big decompression moment um when i when i sort of made that realization and, and then thought well actually there's there's divine intelligence in my body and this is a gift and um just like everyone's body you know it's a, it's a gift so we need to work on that relationship that we have yeah. And of course, like I've said before, everything in the body is light or electrical current in motion. And um, our good light responds to good light. If we're having a hug or something like that, or we're listening to great music that makes our, you know, uh, hairs stand up, you know, that is a resonant situation. But we also respond electrically to things are, that are bad light, which is effectively imbalanced, uncentered, spinning rings of electrical current, which is what man-made emf is so um so that that's another aha moment if you like that i that um that i'm grateful for yeah yeah and and spending a lot of time in the negative news going down rabbit holes that may not be conspiracy theories but actually conspiracy facts that doesn't serve you because it lowers your vibration and gets you out of coherence with uh this divine uh resonance and um yeah i found by staying out of the news and out of uh negative tv shows and and you know kind of like all the 
violence that's typical in most Hollywood movies and, and shows on Netflix, I really end up uh, attracting more uh, light and abundance and synchronicities and so forth into my life. And I'm happier too. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you can't really create from the place of fear. You can only create fear from the place of fear, if you know what I mean, right? So if you're listening to lots of fearful stuff or, you know, angry stuff, should we say, on, you know, uh, on, on the news or whatever, then you're only able to really create more anger from there. Whereas if you turn your head and look for the things that are actually positive, of which there are many, um, you know, you can just literally go for a walk and look at all the nature around you and, uh, and, and just immerse yourself in that. And then you can create much better from, from that place. Um, so look, we have free will we we are here to have an experience, right. And we're here. Thanks for, the, you know, but for the grace of God, um, you know, uh, having this experience. Um, so really it's up to us, which way we want to go, um, and which, is there that proverb about which wolf you want to feed? You know, <laughs> um, you know the, the 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 nasty one or the good one. You know, it's it, it, you know it's it's that simple. It really is that simple. You know, everything is spinning rings of electrical current, and it's either balanced, centered in the vibration of love, or it's imbalanced, uncentered, which is in the vibration of fear and all those other nasty things. So, yeah, we're ch we're choosing we're choosing all the time, and our brains can get so easily sucked into just just working you know i found this out when i got stressed just just from working too much and and being too obsessed with some kind of false reality through <laughs> through whatever it was emails or you know or worries about not being good enough or you know not getting what you needed and all those sort of things um the brain can sometimes work against you in that respect um so yeah mm -hmm. learning learning to just release it and be is the biggest lesson at the moment for me anyway <laughs> well release it without judgment uh, you know just notice mm -hmm. and uh not have attachment either way just like let it uh roll off your back like uh water off a duck's back and and not get into the trap of well i should be or i really you know i've let myself down or whatever because i made uh this um detour or i i didn't um keep my vibration high or whatever no it's just this is all an opportunity to experience and you know, you're going to experience negative thoughts and negativity and stuff, and you're going to learn and grow from that too. So, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Well, everything's a chance to learn and grow. It's yeah. just, you know, which direction you take from it. Yeah, yeah. And um, things are yeah. sent to try us. There's no doubt about that. You know. A long time ago, I, I read the book, The Elegant Universe by Brian Greene, and I learned about string theory and uh, hidden dimensions and all that. And I was agnostic up until age 42. This was prior to, to my first awakening in India. And uh, I was fascinated by quantum physics and uh, string theory and all that sort of stuff. And now it comes full circle. All the stuff that I was fascinated by scientifically uh, relates to the things that have uh, a spiritual component to it or, or a, you know, tie back to spirituality. I was never interested in the kinds of uh, scientific phenomenon that, that didn't um, you know, relate to spirituality. Although I guess science is uh, just a, servant to the divine will and so you know everything <laughs> scientific points well back sci to the science creator. can often be anyways i i was just uh yeah yeah science can often be one of two things either an inversion of the truth or a means of hypnotizing us 
with potentially falsehoods mm. and so on. So we have to be careful because science is, especially in the 5G world, is being war gamed. You know, they're, they're trying to push the science of the electromagnetic spectrum at us and say, there's no way that that could be harmful, pretty harmful, you know. And they're doing it in other areas as well, but I'm not going to get into those because they're too controversial. I don't want your, your show to get into any trouble, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, areas where the science is effectively war mm. and propagandized uh, to, and anyone that speaks out of turn is ostracized, you know, um, struck off social media and, and so on. It's really happening, you know. Um, so in, you know, the, the people, the people that are behind the curtain, shall we say, they know how powerful the truth is. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I don't think it's something they can stop. Right. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> so I want to bring us back to uh, the amelioration of EMF exposure through your uh, technology. So I know we're out of time here. How, how does our, our listener or viewer uh, get get those um, uh, stickers or the pendants uh, from your company? How do they follow you uh, and learn from you and, and potentially work with you? Yeah, well, thanks thanks for the, the opportunity to come on and, and explain to people about it. Um, I just wanted to say one more thing, which is that within our sticker, there is a tiny unit of energy. Well, tiny units of energy which have a program which meet the radiation field and set the zero point back to its geometric center so that you have the vibration effectively of of love if you like you know it's basically making making the the radiation field resonant with the energy in the human body and then we do those tests that i mentioned to prove that the body says yes the, the body responded well so you can see all those tests on our website which is www omnia radiation balancer.com um and uh, yeah if you want to shoot me an email i'm at uh, hello at omnia balance dot life uh my name's tim um so yeah uh feel free to to contact me if, uh, if you've got any questions or um and i'll offer your Read us a little discount as well uh, at the store, which is uh, if you if you use the code love from Omnia, all capital letters or um, or one word. Uh, uh, so it's O M N I A, uh, Omnia Radiation Balancer dot com. And um, yeah, that, uh, please have a look at our test results. And if that resonates with you, then um, I think it will bring great benefit to your body. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tim. And thank you, listener. Thank you for being open-minded and uh, wanting to grow and evolve and uh, yeah, get out there and do something amazing. We'll catch you in the next episode. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, signing off. Mm -hmm.